In this world, angels live among us. Many great invincible beings of immeasurable power, a bridge between us and the gods. These creatures are not as you might imagine them. While some are human-like in their appearance, most are alien. A sitting mountain, a giant boar, a hovering sphere. Each of the angels provides a powerful boon to the surrounding area and its inhabitants. They do not speak to us. They do not move. We built our world around them. They shaped our cultures. We rely on them. Until something dark came along. Now, one by one, the angels have been slain. The people of the lands around them, slaughtered. A wave of death is spreading across our world. Only a few places remain as a final bastion of life. Only a few against an endless horde of oblivion. And within these few, a single band of unlikely heroes, bound by forces beyond their understanding. In this world, there is only a single word that describes their soul-bound connection. Rack, you sit within a room of broken mirrors. Your reflection in each one, splitting into hundreds more. In some of the reflections, you witness yourself looking back. In some, your reflection is looking away from you. In some, the world is on fire. In some, there are reflections of your party members looking back at you. What do you do? <sighs> what are the? I would I would study the closest mirrors. Okay. Give me a perception check. Right. A 16. What are you studying it for? Um, I mean, I just, uh, trying to figure out what's going on. So I guess I'm just taking in my surroundings. Behind you, war leader Kogan calls out. The wildebeest. Don't let them cross the river. Herd them back. Crack, the wildebeest herd is moving away from the warband. Somewhere in the distance, there is the thundering of big boars, enormous trotters slamming into the ground as they do. The warband following it with their drums striking in unison. The familiar sounds of uh, Ixalan and the pack move northwards. However, you and your kinship are in charge of the Wildebeest herd this month. The Wildebeest are a necessary part of the pack overall. The leather alone is precious to the war leaders. Beside you are three of your pack kinship members, Urzal, Brock, and Sean. Um, all of you are mounted. It's very rare that the, uh, the orcs of your, your, uh, your pack, your tribe are, are not. Um, most ride horses or wargs, but some ride other things. Um, you can really have anything that makes sense, so long as it isn't flying. What are the four of you riding atop of? Uh, wargs. Well, I wasn't just asking you, I was asking Urzan and uh, Urzal, Brock and Sean as well. Yeah, uh, what he said. A yeah. warg. 
Wargs. Wargs. Yeah. <laughs> Wargs. Wargs. So, Wargs. a warg is this sort of, um, it's, ki it's kind of like a wolf, um, but they're much bigger. Um, the biggest and strongest ones are the sizes of uh, horses. Um, but they're kind of evil, to be honest. Um, they are... Uh, they're a little smarter than uh, sort of your traditional wolf. Um, but generally speaking, they're just used as horses. Um, the group that you're all a, a part of, this sort of kinship, are all on the uh, on these wargs the entire war band that follows big boar is known as the pack um and then there are war leaders uh but between the uh the four of you you're just in charge of keeping these wildebeest this herd um which is moving away from the uh the pack and is heading towards one of the rivers um the first thing I'd like you to do for me, Thrak, is roll for fury. So this is how much you are under the influence of Big Boar, and generally speaking, kind of how tilted you are at anything and everything that's going to be happening today. Um, so just roll me a d20 and it's a gradient from 1 to 20. And you can okay. pick one. Do you think one means you're more furious or 20 means you're more furious? Uh, I think it's one. You okay. lose control. Yeah. 14. Uh, 14. Okay. Um, yeah. How do you guys go about bringing these wildebeest, this herd, back to pack can't we just scream at them i was gonna scream at them yeah, well, well then we, do we, it we... Uh, yes, it will yeah no it... no you can't scream at them again you're just gonna you displease the spirits oh, it's gonna make my life can. really hard is it now uh, what do you think runty little frack no, look at him back there. Why is he all the way back there anyway? Come he's on, doing all the up. thinking. Let's think him. Oh, what movie, Frack? Big old brain, hasn't he, Frack? <laughs> Your magic's not <laughs> helping you back there, though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'll uh, catch up to them. I'm real confused, I think. But... Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um... Yeah, we've got these three um, other orcs that are now sort of riding about on these wargs with, with Thrak. Um, I think for the rest of us that are viewing Thrak, he looks significantly younger. I wouldn't say necessarily that he is um, a, a child, but I think he looks significantly younger to us all. Um, the three... Oh, he's petite. He's compact is what he is. <laughs> he's maybe a little smaller than the others. Uh, than the other three. The other three, um, uh, give us a quick rundown of who each of you are. And also, I'm just going to mention that Orkish had no idea this was happening until they appeared on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Brock, Ork, Green. <laughs> yeah, that is literally what Orkish sent to uh, Palomar <laughs> Chewpacker about uh, what his character artwork needed to look like. Yeah, that's oh. true. And he did a great job. Yeah, do you want to give us any more detail, um, Brock? <laughs> oh, me, Brock, Orc, Green, Big, right. Barbarian, Fighter! Yeah, Brock is enormous. He's an absolute giant, um, covered probably in scars, um, probably one of the bigger um, Orcs in the, in the pack. What Stars about... only in front, none in the back. None on the Die back. Die first. Uh, <laughs> uh, what about uh, Urzel? Yeah. Orc. Green. <laughs> Shaman. Talk to his <laughs> spirits and stuff. What a lack in stature I make up for in all of my 
wily ways. <laughs> big stick she carries. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're bigger than Thrak, though. He's <laughs> tiny, look at him. <laughs> Still bigger than Thrak. Uh, okay, so we've got a shaman. What about uh, Sean? Yes, Sean. Orc, green. Green. And I'm a scout. Run around quick. Bigger than him. Yeah. Leggy fast, green. Big legs, big Leggy ears. Fast. You're like the ear yes. from uh, from uh, Vinland Saga, just because we always yes, have to I bring can... your characters back to Vinland Saga. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, Thanks okay, so yeah, so the, the four of you are sort of riding now out, out across these plains. Um, and the plains of Ixalan are kind of like um, just long, tall grass, yellowed grass um, for the most part with um, really relatively flat uh, landscape. Um, think sort of, um, you know, the, like the sea of grass that the Dothraki ride around on in Game of Thrones? Or you know there are just those like plains that are in mongolia in earth it's that kind of a landscape um and the uh the war band that you're a part of are all mounted they, they never stop moving you sleep on the back of your warg or your horse or your bear or whatever you're riding around on there is an absolutely ginormous pig a boar which is the angel that moves around this area. All it does is just move around, and anyone that gets close to it gets more and more angry, more and more furious, and, and loses more and more of their will. Um, and uh, that is just moving away from you, and the entire group is moving across the plains here while the wildebeest kind of meander towards the river. So your plan is to shout at them, is that right? Shout. Yeah. I mean, why are we on wildebeest duty again? I swear it was just last week we were doing it. Thrak, run up the front and then bang real loud so that they have to come around. Yeah, go on, use them arms for something. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, okay. All right. And I'll go and do that. I'll, uh, like, bang my axe on something. I don't know. Another piece of wood. I'm right back in it now. All right. Give me an intimidation check. Yeah, I will do. If you do it good, I'll have some money for you. Um, so you're sort of trying to assert dominance over the herd of wildebeest to sort of compel them to move in the desired direction. Um, and I think you do so. I think as you sort of, you, we see your warg, um, take off around the south side of the herd and as you rush towards the head of the pack you start striking your axe against uh, whatever it was you said you were going to uh, shield or something what have you got uh i've just got a big axe and i'm just smacking it against like another piece of wood that i use to hit the or yeah okay so you're just clacking this thing clackety clack yeah. clack clack and yeah i think you see the <laughs> the the head of the herd kind of veer off from the water they're not going into the river anymore but they are also not quite heading back to your um your pack uh but you've stopped them from going into the water however they kind of seem skittish now they stop moving quite as a pack they think they're being hunted the ones at the front start taking off at a bit more of a pace they start to spread a little further out um and you get oh, the sense that any black. any moment now they're gonna they're just gonna bolt and and go wild what if you die? Brock, go show him how it's done. This little runt doesn't know what he's doing. Why should I do all the heavy do? lifting? I did what you told me to. Well, obviously you not did. good enough, did ya? Yeah, what you said. Try thinking for yourself for once. Yeah, think for yourself. <laughs> yeah, do some thinking. You, like <laughs> I said, you do this thing well, fracky boy. I got something for you. I know you like to do your thinking. Yeah, I got a present for you this time. Okay, I'll, I'll ride. Do you think I'll ride as hard as I can on my walk to try and like go and head them off. Okay. Um. Yeah, this will be an animal handling check. Oh, excellent. I'm not good at that at all. I've gotten an eight. An eight. Um. Yeah, this is a fail. What happens? 
Uh, I think I just, I'm too close to them before I get around to head them off. So I'll just get too close and they go the exact direction I don't want them to. Yeah, they start freaking oh, out. And so like moving and, and splitting off pathetic. into different streams of Wildebeest. Yeah, Thrak has completely screwed this up. The other three. What do you three do? Oh, They're gonna fucking turn us. I guess we're gonna have to do it ourselves then, aren't we? Uh, Alright, fine. Uh, Alright, fine. Track, gonna need more of your toenails. You got any I left? I don't need your help. I can do it on my own. Doesn't look like it. Help. <laughs> 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 it's not just your eye that's gonna get turned, Track. It's all of ours, yeah? Wanna do something? How about you do something now? Otherwise, I'll pre tan you. <laughs> to see that. I think in orc fashion, I would I would ride right up to him and uh, you know, yeah, why well, just go ahead and try there? Oh, fracky boy! <laughs> I look down at him. You want to try me in front of big boy himself? They can't do it. Do it. I twist my neck <laughs> and it, it cracks. Do it. Do it. It, it. it sounds like thunder it. cracking fight. in front of his face. Fight. I'm bored. Fight. Fight. We've got to fight. get these. We've got to get the wildebeest. Come on. Yeah, no, I wouldn't mind being tanned if I get to see you wallop Thrak. Sweat <laughs> is dripping down Thrak's forehead, looking up at this massive orc. Way bigger than he is. Uh, what sort of weapons you got there, Brock? Oh, I've got many weapons, I do. Got myself okay. my trusty war axe on my back. I've got myself my trusty throwing axes on my hips. I've got myself this boar tusk that's stuck in me arm. I pull it out on occasion and scratch me ass with it. <laughs> right, I what can't. You have? Oh, I just have I just have the one axe, actually. Oh. Just one war axe and a knife. Uh, yeah. right. So, uh, I think, uh, Frack gets a bit nervous and he says, Leave off then and let me do my job and you do yours. One more chance, Fracky boy. I'm in a good mood, so you get this done, I got a present for you. Yeah, I'll, uh, sort of like push his walk a bit with mine before I ride off to try and round up the wildebeest okay how are you uh, attempting it this time uh i think i'll try i think i'm angry right now so i'm probably gonna go you're probably gonna try to right head them off but this time i'm gonna shout at them again all right uh enraged yeah. Uh, it's another intimidation check then, please. Okay. Natural it's 20. a natural 24. Um, yeah, I mean, everything that you want to happen happens. What is that? How does this go? Yeah, I just, um, I think I, I'm riding my walk and I, you know, kick into its flanks and it bolts forward and it's just you know incredible the agility of the warg and rider jumping from rock from stone to grass down the hill i streak in front of the wildebeest pack shouting the whole time you bloody beasts turn yourselves around come on and they all it's like they're it's like they're listening to me it's magical they're starting to believe and they all go in the exact direction that i want them to back to the to the tribe back to my there team. he is we oh, stand in behind down. rocks as these things come at us ready to attack as they streak to past brack is uh i am uh sort of stood tall in my saddle yeah. <laughs> Looking uh, over at the other three. All right. Well, as these beasts come, we frack behind. I guess the rest of the pack is ready to just take them. We uh, we were hiding behind some rocks, and when they come towards us, 
We're gonna get them with spears and axes and pointy bits. You're gonna get me with spears and axes nah, and pointy bits? No, 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 the wildebeest we were hunting, no. Yeah, yeah, you uh You're not supposed I mean, to kill the, them. The wildebeest. We're not hunting them, these are all wildebeest. <laughs> yeah, oh, wildebeest. What are we doing? going on. We're hurting them. Broth. I'm Don't really hungry. Don't yeah. let the bloodlust control you. By the way, this happens every time you're on Wildebeest, Dewey. Brock eventually tries to kill them all and eat them. Tries to kill them. I'm from the Yorks. I am from the Yorks. I love to eat my pork. Stop it. Stop it. Sit, boys. Sit. Um, yeah, Thrak, you sort of managed to veer these things back. You guys get back into a sort of a formation here behind the Wildebeest and bring them back in. Um, and then there's just sort of a horrible, sickening thud and a crunch. <laughs> As uh, Thrak, you are taken off the top of your walk and hit by a, a, an enormous, um, uh, uh, just tree trunk, basically, of a weapon, and the an elk pulls up beside you as your war kind of skitters away. On top of it, Kogan, the um, your war leader, not the war leader of the entire thing, but one of the bigger orcs. Um, looks down at you and says, Don't let it happen again. Uh, I uh, lower my eyes. Yes, we'll need that. We so need them. In my side. No oh. food for him. He says to Brock. Mm. <laughs> or for me. <laughs> Back on your wall. Back in line. Oh. Yep, yep, okay, yep, yep. <clears throat> the uh the elk that he's riding on is sort of missing one entire antler. Um he sort of wraps one arm around it and just shoves this elk's head one way, which is just pretty much how it's it doesn't have reins or anything, he just pushes the elk's head around. Um, and he sort of kicks the back of this elk and war leader Kogan starts like moving back in towards where the, the greater pack is. Eyes up. Watch to the line to right. Watch to the left. War is afoot. Oh. War. War. <laughs> war. Um, while you're in the long grass down there, there, there's just a bizarre shift. It is nighttime. Um, to the right of you is Sean, and the two of you are now crawling through this grass. Um, Sean turning to you, gesturing to stay low and quiet. There's something ahead of you. There is a wagon sort of trundling across the plains. Four people, each one looks heavily armed. Three human men and a woman. The back of the wagon has supplies, weapons, food, mead. Behind the wagon, the long grass stirs. Brock and Urzel are in position. These people are making the dangerous attempt to cross Ixalan, north to south, you'd wager down into the golden forest perhaps your options are always only two you can kill them and return the supplies to the pack or capture them and bring them to the big boar his influence will force them to join the fury in the pack um there aren't just orcs here there are people that have been caught in the influence of big boar um riding along but predominantly it's orcs um what do you do? Uh, I, w I would look towards uh, the scout, John, and, uh, you know, I, I would say, uh, what do you think? I, we can take them. If we're quick. Right. We're quite like. Yeah. I, uh... Okay. Which one do I go for? 
which ones are there again? So there are four humans. They all look um, well armored. Like they look like uh, knights, basically. Um, but they, their armor looks a little. Actually, do you know what? Um, let's have. Uh... So this is going to be Sean making a perception check. But Thrak, you need to roll it. Okay. What you roll is what Sean says. Huh. It's a natural one. That is a five. It's, it's a big fail. It's dark. It's hard to see, really, at the distance that you're at. Their armor looks like it's in okay condition. They're heavily armored. They've got great swords. Um, they've got long bows. They don't have headgear on, so you can make out their features. They have small heads on such big armor. Um, but you can make out that there's three men and a woman. All of them look like they can probably fight. All of them Ball. strong and muscular looking for humans, puny humans, but still. Great boars, balls. Why don't you go for the woman? It's about your size. Okay, now. I'll count you down. Ready? Okay. Three, yeah. two, one. Oh, little rabbit. Ah! I right. burst out, immediately start screaming, and I've got my axe. I'm like wielding it over my head, charging down the hill, yeah. uh, going after. Roll for the woman. fury. Rolling for fury. A thirteen. A thirteen. Okay. Uh, yeah, you start, you burst out of the grass and rush forward. Um, what is Sean doing? I'm following, yep. Burst out of the grass. Brock? Ah! Urzel? We were waiting on the sidelines, yeah? Had my yeah. hand in front of my face like a polar bear, hiding my pointy tusks. But when they go, I'm gonna go. God, no, wait for me. No, don't leave me. God, oh, Jesus. Come with my axes. Um, okay, yeah. You um, you all start rushing forward. Suddenly, the um, the people on the wagon sort of turn and see that you are rushing towards them. They glance at each other, and one of them says to the other, "Go, go, 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 go!" They start um, striking at the uh, the horses' flanks. The wagon takes off, but it's not on this. There's no road here. They're not moving along a road. This wagon starts bouncing up and down through the long grass as you guys start rushing forward. Um, let's have Thrak make me an athletics check for the group. Okay. Let's get those horses. Uh, 15. Uh, 15, yeah. You guys are easily able to catch up to this uh, this wagon. What do you do when all four of you descend on it? <laughs> I take out the horses first I take so that they the can't driver. run away. Now, when you say take them out... Oh, uh... Slit their throats if I can, or right. break their legs even better. Okay, um, yeah. In a classic maneuver, Sean, who is very quick, um, I think peels ahead of everyone. You see, um, w what weapon do you have? Uh, I've got uh, two small axes, and um, I have a bow and arrow also. But I think I'd probably be using my axes. Yeah, one of the axes flies through the air and just jams in the side of one of the horses' necks. It whinnies, it bucks, the entire wagon lifts and moves one way. The other horse is, is sort of freaking out at the smell of blood and the chaos that suddenly erupted. And then you're on it with the second axe, r running it along the underside of this horse's neck, blood gushing down everywhere. The first yeah. horse isn't dead, the second one is dying quickly, but the wagon pretty much comes immediately to a stop. The four people that are on the wagon pull out these swords, but they struggle to lift them. Now that you're closer, you can see all four of these people are quite old. Um, not old like ancient, they're probably like 50s, 60s, but like older than you'd maybe expect. They also seem to be struggling in that armor and with these swords as they start to panic. Oh, just fend them off! It's orcs! 
They... Who's the biggest one? The biggest one is the guy that was actually on the reins, but he's jumped up now and got a, a, a sword. But they're they're relatively similar in, in size and stature. I'll approach him. Yeah. I walk up to him, and then looking down, I assume I'm a few feet taller, yeah. He's on a wagon, and I think you still kind of come up to eye level with him. All right. Well, I mean, I'd like to grab him by the head and pull his head out of his spine, but I don't know. Is that possible? Uh, Let's see. Let's have another athletics <laughs> check from Thrak. Oh, he's trying to do the classic Brock maneuver. <laughs> I've seen this a few times. <laughs> 17. Uh, I think he actually puts this great sword like into your chest. Like he swings it <gasps> poorly. It doesn't actually... You can you feel that it doesn't bite deep. This is a graze for you, Brock. Um, but it completely immobilizes him. He thinks that he's got a pre pretty decent strike on you, and then you've got your hands on his head. Right. Well, in that case, as the axe digs into my chest, I flex to bury it in place. He tries to pull it. It doesn't come uh, out. Uh, back. I grab back. his head, uh, thumb on one uh, temple, middle uh, finger on the other, uh, pull and pull uh, until I rip it out. The entire spine comes connected like a fuck shish kebab. <laughs> <laughs> the other two jump off the back of the wagon. The woman starts screaming. She just rushes at you, Brock, jumping off of the wagon, running at you with a another great sword. She literally can't even lift this thing. What are the other orcs doing at this point? I want one of them alive. There's Fair two of them that have jumped off the back of this wagon and are just running into the grass, running away in fear. Go on, fracky boy, do something! Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I'll put my do, staff out and one, trip up one. the one that's coming for Brock. Easily done. You don't. I think you do that without a check. Frack, what are you doing? Uh, I'm chasing the two that are running. Okay. You yeah, I've got that. my I've got my axe out. Uh, if I catch up to them, I'm just gonna swing it at them. You're right. Yeah, just an athletics check. That's all I need. Uh, natural one, what which happens? is a four. Oh, uh, I go to swing, and uh, it's like in video games. You know how you're chasing something, and then you swing, and as you're swinging, they get ahead a little bit. So that happens, but I go off balance, and I fall over, and uh, I think I cut myself on the axe. Yeah, but you I'm... go flying into the long grass. What the fuck is he doing? I don't know. I pull out my bow and arrow, and I, uh, I, I want to lob an arrow into into the legs of one of these ones that are running away. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thrak, roll me an acrobatics check for this one. Uh, yeah. Good luck with that one. <laughs> That's a thirteen. A thirteen. It's it's a it's an ugly shot because they're in long grass. Um, the arrow flies through the air. It arcs a little bit, and you see one of them go, boom, uh, falling into the grass ahead of Thrak. There is a woman now that's standing up and turning to um, Urzel, seeing who has tripped her up. She says, "Get away from me! Get away!" Urzel oh. on one side, Brock on the other. You'll make a fine specimen. I, uh, what are they saying? I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> an arm, you say? Really? Yeah, it's just uh, got some rope. Yeah, bind her up. But I could have an arm. You could have an arm, yeah. A weird just one, one. Was, it, was it righty tighty or lefty loosey? I forget. Ah. It's like <laughs> twisting the arm. Yeah, I think it's arm just arm and twisty. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, she's just screaming as you're twisting an arm off. Oh, it was lefty, Lucy. <laughs> it comes yeah, loose. Right. The plate mal armor is like is still intact, but like bent and twisted in a horrible way. You could like you feel the arm break underneath the armor. You feel the armor kind of like bend and awkwardly turn. Metal scraping against scrap metal. She is screaming. Yeah, I'll, you're not going to need that. Yeah, get a rag and shove it in her mouth. Yeah. She's lo absolutely losing her mind. The um, Okay, Thrak, you are back on your feet, bleeding from a wound on your head, blood running into one of your eyes. Yeah. I think it just makes me more upset, so I'll chase the other one down even harder. 
Uh, okay, give me an uh, athletics check. It's there ahead of you now. It's 10 this time. <sighs> yeah, the one... So one Nothing of them ten. has vanished. Because when you were on the ground, you get back up. One of them has fallen over, but you're not aware of it. So you chase the one that you can see. You know that scene in... Um, in Jurassic Park 2, I think, where the velociraptors are moving through the grass. And you you, you get that like bird's eye like view of, of just seeing the grass parting and stuff. I think you're oh, just yeah. kind of doing that as you chase after one of these um, guys. Uh, give me a perception check. 16. 16. Let's roll a d20. A three. You see this coming really easily. There's a like a terrible um, sword swing from this guy. As you're running to try and catch up to him, he stops, he turns around, plants his feet, and swings this sword as hard as he can. But it's clumsy. It's terrible. You see it coming. What do you do? Uh, yeah, I, I just I take it on my uh, on my pauldron, like my shoulder armor that I've got. I yeah. know that it's not coming down hard enough for it to. It's just going to get stuck in the leather. Yeah, I don't so think I it even gets stuck. It I think it, it just kind of hits that. His arm, he, his wrist twists awkwardly. He loses the sword. This great sword flies over your shoulder and clanks behind you. And he just kind of starts yeah. backing up. Stay away from me. Stay stay away from me. I, uh, I feel, uh, you know, anger and shame over tripping. There's blood in my face. I know the others are watching me or they're nearby. I lift my uh, axe up over my head and uh, I, I come I come down with it to uh, as hard as I can on All this right. fella's head and whatever's in the way. You may try. Give me an athletics check again. An eight. An eight. I think that you actually get him, but it doesn't kill him. I think this just goes into like the area above his shoulder and this axe goes, it buries oh, in. He will die from this for sure, but he doesn't die now. He is just screaming. Blood, a gout of blood just rushes up, strikes you in the face. One half of your face is now covered in this guy's blood. The other half is covered in your own. And he just starts screaming. The, the axe is kind of caught. It's wedged on like his collarbone or something. As you start like yeah. wrenching this thing backwards, he's screaming yeah. and losing his mind. What do you do? Uh, I put my foot in his mouth. It's dual purpose. Uh, it shuts him up and it also gives me uh, leverage to pull the axe out of his shoulder. Yeah. Oh, it, but I love when they sing. It breaks Playing with your it, food, frat. It breaks his jaw as you finally wrench this thing free. He hits the ground. He rolls over. He can't seem to move. He's still screaming. One of his arms kind of completely limp. The other one reaching out, trying to defend himself. He's looking up at you. He's, his eyes are looking at you. There's just an enormous amount of fear in his eyes. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I decapitate him. Yeah, easy. You don't need to do a check for it. He's not moving or anything. You just bring the axe down and his head rolls. Uh, from behind you, there is a scream as uh, somebody's running up with the the uh, the greatsword. The second guy is running towards you. Well, limp running, but running with the greatsword out in front of him, thrusting it out towards you. What do you do? Uh, I'll, I'll just do an easy parry with my axe and then a fluid motion to swing the axe down on his head. Okay, give me an athletics check of advantage because he has an arrow in his calf. My oh, on. A 14 one. Yeah, you do exactly what you want to do here. You parry his sword. You recognize that these people are not fighters. Why they're in armor, what's going on here, you don't know. These are You've encountered fighters before. You've encountered humans with this kind of heavy metal armor on that they wear from the other lands. Um, and when they usually have this metal on, they're actually usually a formidable fight. This is not at all. This is like fighting children for you. You just parry this, you bring the sword around, run it across this guy's um, armor and, and bat him to, to one side. He drops his sword, falls, stumbles, rolls across in front of you. And then what do you do? I'll uh, bring the axe down on his head. It lands yeah, in the middle of his no face. Quarter. This axe just splits his nose um, and his eyes and his face caves in. There's just a horrible wet crunch 
as uh, you kill this last one. There is a... Um, ah! Behind you, the others are... Uh, are carrying an unconscious now um, woman. The three men. Dragon, I reckon. <clears throat> I want to know what's in dead. the wagon. Is your arm the horses off. are dead. Her arm is like completely destroyed, but inside the armor, it's kind of hanging awkwardly and twisted angle because the armor is also yeah, bent. Ripped off. Not yet. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I've got a message for you, Frack. It's from your ancestors. They said you're a fucking mess. What was that? <laughs> what you mean? I got two. I got more than any of you got. <laughs> One of them almost got you, though, didn't they? <laughs> no. Oh, I got to take the wagon on your own feet. <laughs> well, well, well. Little Runty's growing up, isn't he? Helping out in the hunts. Killing a few squishy people in tin pots. Well, I did say earlier, I had a present for you. I found something else for you now instead. I think you earned it. Was in this wagon out here. I seen you. The way you look at our shamans and our sorcerers. <laughs> they have power. You got nothing. I've seen you reading. I've seen you Magic. looking for things. <laughs> well. I just found something for you. Looks like a scroll. Little Ursi of you with the stick said it's a scroll of cleaning or something. Single use. There you are. Maybe you can learn it or something. I hand thrack this, uh, this scroll. It's rolled up. Uh, yeah, I take it and, um, sort of snatch it out of his hand. And I'm like, uh, yeah, well, you know, I don't, I don't need this to kill no one, no. As <laughs> much as strong as you are, Brock. <laughs> as you grab it, there's a squelch to the scroll. <laughs> and you notice a familiar smell. Do you open it? <laughs> Is the smell shit? It is shit. <laughs> Looks like it was yeah, single use, this know. spell for cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would know before I open it, because you've done this to me. Oh, all the time. Before. Yeah. And I throw it on the ground, and I'm covered in blood, and I'm pissed off, and I push uh, Brock. Maybe I've got a present for you, gripping my axe. You try oh, and push me. Oh. oh, unless the DM wants to roll, I don't think I'll move. Uh, yeah, I mean, you need to roll me an athletics check, Thrak, um, with disadvantage okay. because you are significantly smaller than him. And then you need to roll me an athletics check for Brock, which will be with advantage because he's significantly bigger than you. Okay, so I get a 13 mm -hmm. and Brock gets an 11. Yeah, I think what happens here is... Please. Um, there's one of the, you know, those moments where you definitely don't push him over, but for the first time, Rack pushes you and there's a little strength to it. And he, he makes you stumble backwards a little, take a few steps back. I lose ground. Yeah. Oh, I look back at the shit scroll and go, that was a gift. Frank. And I say his name. I don't say runty. Is frack. And I think you realize for the first time I ain't looking at you like a runt no more. You are fret. I don't do nothing. But you might want to watch your back now. Fracky boy. Uh Thrack. The enormous boar is thundering across the plains day and night. The riders behind it, each orc on horseback, walk. Some of them are riding on top of bears. Um, there's uh, the one on an elk. Um, one of the elite war leaders, Igmat, is um, sort of striding along behind Big Boar on a two-headed lizard, a giant lizard. 
um, and you're sitting on your warg and you look up at the boar with its influence filling your mind um, sort of gripping your will and you swell with that familiar fury the anger that binds you to the pack uh, roll for fury and I think when we as an audience see Thrak now he looks a little older than he did before he looks a little uh, a little different a little maybe a little more like the Thrak that we recognize and you've rolled a natural one natural one which means I am fully enraged as angry as I've ever been uh, I am in complete control under the ball I mean uh, what's the closest living creature near me? Um, there's an orc called Shazag. Uh, I walk up to Shazag and I punch him full on in the face. Okay, wrong me an athletics check. Hard as I can. I took natural 23. You walk up to this orc who's bigger than you, who's, um,. He's sitting there with like a like a rabbit or something that's been cooked on a stick and he's just chewing it. And he turns around and just says, Well, well, little fr... And then you just knock him out. It's a one punch, yeah. a world star. Bang, you just strike him. Everyone around you is suddenly... Fire! Everyone just starts <laughs> punching each other immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, roll me a uh, a d20. Twelve. A 12. Um, there's a point during this where everyone is fighting everyone. You're just in this mess. People are striking each other. They're throwing things. Some of the orcs are just killing each other because that's what they do. You turn around at one point and someone runs directly into you on the back of their warg and you're just caught by this, spun around. And as you hit the ground, you feel the sensation of hitting water. There's like a splash. <laughs> um, again, you find yourself in that sort of strange place with mirrors. You're on top of your warg, riding through just just fractal mirrors. Um, a lot of them are broken. Uh, again, in some of them is your own reflection. In some of them is the reflection of your um, orc friends and family and kinship. Um, in some of them are the members of the Cura. Um, in some is just fire. In one is an empty chair. In one is you uh, looking back at you. One is you looking away. Um, and you're sort of trotting slowly on the back of your warg. As you look down at your warg, roll me a d20 again. A seven. It's decayed. The warg is... is. It looks like a, a corpse, basically. Like you've just dug this thing up. Um, it's definitely your warg. I don't know if you named it or didn't care or anything like yeah. that. But this Scab. was... Scab. Scab completely partly decayed and rotting um, as you ride along um, eventually you come to an area where there are stone walls there are these um, crumbling kind of ancient walls there are red plants that are growing up out of the ground there are trees that have green bark and red blossoms um and there is now just a single mirror, but it looks kind of like a door more than a mirror, but your reflection um, stares back at you. There is a familiar voice speaking in a language that you don't understand coming through this mirror. Um, and you see a creature on the other side, sort of a tall, strong looking human, but much larger, larger than you, larger than a lot of the orcs. He's got a bald head, and in one hand, he's holding a sort of a shining um, glass ball. He's got a red cloak around his shoulders. And when he speaks, the words he's speaking make no sense to your, um, to your ear. But they appear around the doorway, magically glittering and floating in the air on your side of this 
mirror. Um, as he turns to you, he looks at you and sort of folds out of existence, leaving you staring at your own reflection. Behind you, your three companions arrive. In the mirror, they appear different. The orcs you recognize beside you as you look at them are simply shadows in the mirror. There are 24 words floating around the doorway and each one is written in orcish floating around glittering um, and you can move them when you choose to move them the companions understand that you have to match three sets of four words uh, here are all of the words, those of you that are watching this and not listening, uh, this is what you need to do. Um, the other three, you're here. Match three sets of four words. Uh, once you put them into the little depressions that are on the uh, wall there, that will count. That's what you are. Okay. Doing. So, three sets. Of four words. Correct. Okay. Oh, puzzles. Make me head hurt. What's it mean? Fracky, can you tell us what it means? Their words. Oh, what I got mean? that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they mean all sorts of different things, don't I? <laughs> Tell it to well. yourself. Not to us. <laughs> What's that one mean? A point of cure. That's oh. a funny word, isn't it? It's a weird looking word. Never seen anything like that. Uh, I think Frank, I know. Roll me, um, roll me, I guess, an investigation or a history check would be fine. Okay. A natural eight. A natural one. <sighs> yeah, you, uh, you read it you understand what it says and the you know that feeling of like when when you have a thought or a, a you're trying to recall something that's on the tip of your tongue and you you just can't quite remember what that thing is you know that one word that you're yeah. looking for or the actor that's in that movie or you know what i mean that, that kind of feeling that's what you have intensely when you look at that word yeah, okay. Um, what does it mean to you? I feel like I should know. Yeah, and? I don't. Uh, hey, all that book reading not doing you much good then, are they? What did I tell Frankie. you? What did you tell him? Ross. I told him not to read any books, didn't I? Oh, right, yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah. Ross. A few times, actually. How many times? Oh. Or... At least one. Oh. Oh. Right. All sounds very orky now, like blood and drums. Yeah. Yeah, but Ross. you know what else sounds orky? One, one word in each square. Three... One word yeah, in each three square. Sets of All right. Three sets of four. Uh, I can't that move Warg or Yeti or Dove or Mouse. That's great. Uh, all right, I'll double check them out. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Warg. Drums. What's your work in? Shh. 
Kids living in Ixalan. Brass of the poor wargs, drums. Oh. oh. Yeah, things from home, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that must be what it is. I could have told you no, that. That makes sense. Yeah, you could have. Yeah, I could have told you that, yeah. What else can you tell us? Well, you didn't know, did you? I did. I mean, I don't <laughs> tell you things for free, do I? Cough up. Baby's angry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the, uh, the four words sort of glitter and vanish. As they're accepted. I think he's doing something. He's always doing something, though, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. Chains. Huh, <laughs> fuck. It's you, because you're chained. Uh, chained to your stupid <laughs> ideals. Magic. Uh, everyone knows sense. you can't do magic without talking to the spirit. Yeah. I say, saying that to my back, I, I silently move my name in next. Okay. Without looking back at them. I move blood in. And the last you word. said Frack was gonna die 12 winters ago. Well, they're not always 100% accurate. Time moves differently for spirits, yeah? Right. I'd know because I talk to him all the time. I oh, see, so yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. It might have meant 13 moons before you died. Oh. It's hard to tell, yeah. It, what Chains, does mean, though? Thrack, blood, and escape. Glitter and uh, vanish. You guys can carry on there. <laughs> Wait, so if he dies, <laughs> then I yeah. die in 13 months? Yeah, I yeah, think. pretty much. Yeah, I think that's what they mean. Think Shit. That last one was done more on instinct than thinking. Yep. And I like to think that I'm sort of coming back to who I am today. What do you think? Uh, yes. You can roll me a d20. Okay. If you give me your portion of meat tonight, I'll ask the spirits again. I'll just give you frags. I rolled a two. Oh yeah, all right. Wow. I don't think you. Uh, I. Don't... I don't think you fully come back to who you are today. With um. You don't mind giving the portions away, do you, fracky boy? Yeah, I don't think so. It's for the greater good. The greater Dang. good. <laughs> You ain't doing much growing anyway, huh? <laughs> uh, hey, what do the spirits say about me? Uh, <coughs> yeah. Yeah, they say you're gonna be the strongest Orc yeah. in the clan. Yeah. 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 In fact, some of them say you're already the strongest orc in the clan. Well, I mean, I have been. I've killed most of the people who've attacked me, yeah? Yeah, yeah. They say when you die, you're going to be the one calling the shots. Yeah. yeah. Up there in the fields, yeah, with groups running yeah. around with big boar. But they also me. said you need to keep me at your right hand side for that to happen, so I guess you'll have to keep protecting me. Wh which one's me right? Right, you tighty, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The one you used for tearing. That one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Me arse wiping hand. <laughs> yeah, don't touch me. I've got to keep you there. You've picked four more words. What are they? Thorn flag. Flangs. Envy and run. Can you show you're working on that one? Yeah, I think it's just sort of uh, pieces of emotion that are stuck to Thrak uh, from his past. And uh, even though Envy was taken from him, there's a reason why he chose to chose to have that taken away. 
Okay. The four words. In fact, all four of them. Uh, all, all three of your sets had to do with the past. Grass ball, word, uh, drums was all Ixalan. Um, chains, thrack, blood, escape, past. Corn flag, flames, envy, run, emotional past. Can you show us? Uh, because it displays in this mirror what uh, the night looked like that Thrak left. How he did it. What happened. Yeah. Um, it was... It was a night where... Uh, we saw another group coming through uh, Ixalan and I think we were sent out to take care of them again but this time they didn't look like fighters they were dressed in robes and um, they had uh, staffs and um, they were walking around uh, with no we just like packs on uh, didn't look like they had been traveling long didn't look like uh, they knew how long it would take for them to get through so really doing them a favor you know cutting them up now before they die to something else there's no way they're getting across the plains with that little supplies so we're tracking them down and uh it's the middle of the night and we're chasing them and we sort of uh, lose track of each other. It's a, it's a little strange uh, because we're chasing them and we feel like we're going to catch them. You know, that same feeling we get every time when we finally get our hands around these trespassers coming into our land. Oh, they just slip away the last moment and we get more and more angry and before I know it I'm completely alone and I'm chasing just one of them and I get closer closer and uh, I reach out to grab him and he is gone by the time my hands get around his robe and it's nothing but a robe now and I'm pulling the robe apart, trying to get to him. And all I find in there is a small stone statue. And it's a tower. Tart's tower. I've never seen it before, but I recognize it. And I get about five seconds looking at it before I'm gone. The planes are gone. The wind on my face is gone. And I'm in Hard's Tower. Yeah, you're sitting in a... <clears throat> a chair. I, I don't know if you've honestly ever sat in a chair before. Um, a, and we're talking what is essentially as close to a sort of modern day like armchair as you can get really um there's a fire in a hearth and there is uh a slightly larger version of this chair that you're looking at across from you with this big human um i don't know if you've ever seen a goliath before so because I don't think they've ever come that far south. It would be unbelievably rare. Um, so there's just what looks to you to be just an enormous human, sort of grayish skin, um, a, a long beard, but a bald head. Um, and he's wearing very little. For Hard is usually wearing robes upon robes and stuff like that. 
Um, but he is wearing uh, just sort of like a like a, a vest and some like traveler's trousers with his feet out bare, um, his arms out, uh, and you can see that his arms are covered in little bits of sort of patterned scarification and then lots of tattoos and all of the t tattoos look like runes as if someone has just etched runes across his arms and his shoulders um he's not entirely covered in this but there there's quite a few of them and he's turning over in his hand the little tower um and he's looking at it and he looks up at you and he looks down at the tower and he puts the tower down next to the hearth and says it worked where am i who the hell are you i am uh, hard uh, what is your name my name's your end and i charge him uh, make me a wisdom saving throw. <clears throat> okay. Uh, 13. Uh, you're not moving. You're just pinned to this, uh... <sighs> What'd you do to me? Uh... A very simple spell. <laughs> Uh, don't worry, you will be able to move soon enough. You do this with a spell? What are you? Well, I'm a wizard. What are you? Ah, I'm pissed off! That's what I am! Not for long. The, uh, pig has done this to you. Uh, to all of you. It's like the words that you said just sort of, I can feel it just draining out of me. Have you ever had a cup of tea? What? Look in your hands. Drink it. By the time you are finished, you will feel much better. It smells like dirt. It smells like water. It is water. Not really dirt. Uh, leaves. That comes from very far away. Very, very far away. Don't spill it. Ah! It's hot! Yes. Who drinks hot water? Come, I think you can handle a little bit of hot water. Bounty in one. You don't look as angry as you were a minute ago. No. <laughs> Why am I here? Because you want to be here. That and I need you to be here as well, but sort of a side effect. Okay. To your... big... old man wizard. And you want me here. Why? You are, uh, unique. Um, your, uh, kinship, I think you call them. They have rejected you your whole life. And, uh, I sort of understand how this feels a little bit. I was born with, uh, an affinity for magic. And uh, so were you. Uh, you uh, think that it has been uh, muscles and uh, 
the skills uh, and training that have made you grow and uh, you, when you uh, you shoved your friend you think that this was your muscles no it was uh, the magic uh, when you were uh, able to herd the animals uh, you think you scared them with sticks come it was magic slowly you are growing in uh, power but without training uh, mentorship you will amount to nothing however with uh, uh, I suppose uh, a little uh, guidance uh, you can amount to great things if you would like takes a sip of his tea You mean fucking dispels like this one? Uh, yes. There are many spells. There are different affinities that perhaps you will uh, take a shine to. Um, I am a fan of many different types of spells. Uh, this place that you are in is my greatest spell. It is a tower. I built it. In fact, I am building it. And I will build it. Uh, you, however, I think perhaps are going to uh, amount to even greater things. Your mind is uh, unique. I suspect perhaps sometimes you lose time. Mm. Have you ever... Uh, uh, woken up uh, when you didn't realize uh, you were asleep, perhaps. I uh, tried to stand up. Yeah, you can move. I uh, I get closer and I sort of lean in. How do you know so much about me? That question is easy. You told me yourself. The fire behind you that is burning becomes very intense. As you are back on the plains. And there is fire everywhere. Um, as far as your eyes can sort of see and scan across the horizon, there is pretty much nothing but death all around you. You can hear the war leaders screaming in the distance, orcs clashing with the undead. They're lizard creatures. They're gnashing at orc flesh. There are orcs that are crushing and bludgeoning their skeletal foes. In the sky, something flies overhead. A shadow within a shadow. Just an absolutely enormous, decaying dragon. Um, there's a flash of energy from its mouth. And green poison rains across the battlefield, reducing any orc it covers into a sort of boiling, fleshy mulch. There's a sort of overwhelming additional presence as well, as if... As if death itself is trying to pull you into the ground, into an early grave. The skin on your body is burning, opening in wounds and sores. The heart in your chest is beating harder and faster than it should be, as if it's struggling to remain. Far into the distance, the wrecked and broken corpse of Big Boar lies. The Angel of Grunch. The boar's flesh has been torn open. The bones of the giant pig's ribs have split through its side. And the orcs nearby have gone into a frenzy. They're tearing and striking at friend and foe alike. The left eye of the boar's carcass is missing. 
And as you stare into it, it stares back into you and you get a strange feeling of deja vu. What are you doing? I, 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 I walk towards it slowly as in a complete daze. I can't control myself. Okay. Uh, Sean. Yes. What are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm, fi I'm fighting. I I'm uh, running, looking for anyone that I recognize. Okay. Um, let's have uh, Thrak roll me a perception check. 18. 18. Uh, who are you ideally looking for, John? Um, I'm looking for Brock. Brock? Hey. What are you doing? Kill him. Yeah. Kill Brock him. is standing to, like 35 feet to, to your right, Sean. Um, he has got a lance through his side. It has gone straight through one side and is coming out of his back. He's missing his entire left arm. Um, he's swinging with his right and just taking out one zombie after the other. These lizard folk, they're much smaller than you are, um, much thinner. They're basically skeletons with some flesh dangling off of them. They're just jumping at him like velociraptors would jump at that T-Rex, and he is just taking them out one by one. One latches onto his back. You can see the flesh of his shoulder tear away as he grabs it, flings it. Uh, what do you do, Sean? Uh... Yeah, I I just start fighting everything around me. Um, uh, now I'm I'm fighting for my life because if he's going down, I don't know what the future holds. Yeah. Okay. Um, Frank, roll me an athletics check. Seventeen. A seventeen. Yeah, you start moving through, like, parting these um, zombies, moving towards him. There are other orcs that are just kind of being decimated around you, destroying. Um, it is nothing but flames, fire. There are these, like, pools of poison that are smoking up. The long grass of the plains here are almost entirely on fire. It's, it's extremely hot. It's difficult to breathe. Uh, a little zombie... A creature jumps up at you. You instinctively grab its face and fling it behind you. Another one jumps up on your back. You feel its claws raking through your skin. What are you? Uh, what are you doing? I shout, "Where's Urzal? Where is Urzal? A right side somewhere. I'm with what a is... group of shaman elders. We're all going in a tight knit group towards the ball." We need the eyeball! The other one! Right. <sighs> yeah, there's a small the group ball. of shamans. They're all moving together. You can hear them kind of chanting, and, and you can see this kind of with these wisps of sort of strange necromancy around them, and it is somewhat affecting these creatures. They're able to repel them and part them somewhat. Um, every now and then, one will break through, and they have to manually dispose of it. As they move towards the boar, um, Urzal will need to roll me a wisdom saving throw via Thrak. We've got to protect the, protect the shamans. Eleven. Protect me! Eleven is a fail. Urzal, you go into uh, full-blown fury as you get you and the, the other shamans get too close to the eye. What are you doing? I love what she's having. I run straight for the ball. Running straight for the ball. Um, yeah, you um, you see Urzel just break free of the other shamans. Um, a sort of ghoulish lizard, much bigger than the others, slams into the side of Urzel. Urzel, you fall, and as you go to stand back up, you are impaled on something. You look down. There is uh, a lance or a stick that is just sticking through your stomach. The creature that was that has pushed you jumps onto you. There is it starts like raking at your skin. There's flesh. Um, a second one jumps onto Urzal. They start biting at your shoulder. One bites at your face, rips your cheek clean off. 
Um, what are the other two doing? I'm running after them. I'm gonna try and yeah. peel these things off, my little shammy. I need her to fix me arm! Give me an athletics check, please, Thrak. A ten. A ten. You try to run after them, but Brock, <sighs> for the first <sighs> time in your life, you feel weak. You've actually <sighs> lost uh, so much blood. You think you're running, but you're not. You're on the ground. You no! are laying there and bleeding out. Um, Sean, while you're looking at Brock, he has no legs. His body has been torn from his legs and he is still crawling forward with one arm until eventually he slows and stops. What do you do, Sean? I, I run up and I take his, um, I take his weapon and I kick him over to make sure he's dead. He's definitely dead. Very dead. Arr! And I chase after um, where Urzel is. Okay, I need another uh, wisdom save from Thrak. 17. You make it, but I also need a dexterity saving throw as the sky opens up and rains more poison. <gasps> 10. Uh, that is a fail. Urzal, you're still alive, you're fending these things off, and then you are hit by just a wave of poison breath. This melts you, your skin is melted straight off the bone, it takes seconds. Uh, no. Sean, you jump backwards, you are, but you are caught by a bunch of this as well. You feel your skin boiling, you feel your hair no. boiling, you look at your hands no. and arms as they welt and open. You're still no. somewhat alive. You turn around and you see Thrak. Thrak, who you haven't seen for years. He looks completely different. His hair has got a weird style to it. He's wearing like these strange clothes and these robes and things. He's like gripping a book under one arm. Run, rabbit! Run! Thrak, what do you do? I... think that I... Continue walking towards the ball. I'm like observing these these orcs that I used to know better than anyone perish, uh, but it's just something happening far, far away, or in a dream, or in a haze. And I hear the words she's saying, but I'm just walking towards that empty eye socket or No, no! What are you doing? Run! What I say? Do what you do best! Run! Arr! Uh, something bursts out of Sean's chest. Uh, a hand and a wrist bursts out. The parts of Sean's body that were melting from the poison sort of sloth away as something crawls upwards out of um, Sean's chest. A second hand and then a sort of a horned figure dressed in northern wear as Cirrus pulls herself out from the <coughs> chest cavity of Sean. Cirrus is moving towards you. The boar in the background still draws you forward. What are you doing, Thrak? It's Cirrus now. It is Cirrus. I sort of shake my head and blink my eyes. Uh, uh, Cirrus? Is that you? Cirrus is just walking towards you. No noise, no speaking, just staring at you. Around you, the orcs are falling one by one, slain by these creatures, melted under this sort of devastating airborne poison breath, um, or just simply falling dead from the physical toll that seems to be taking place on living creatures on this battlefield um you have an option here you can keep walking or you can wake up i'll keep walking what's uh, the intention I, I don't know 
I just know I have to get to the ball. Above you. This dragon seems to be circling you now as you're moving towards the boar. The battlefield is empty. There's now nothing. What, where there were bodies, there is really just um, nothingness. Um, but an intense kind of wind starts blowing across this this plains. As you look across it, you get the sense that the corpses and the skeletons and the weapons and even the angel itself has probably been laying here for six months, nine months, a year, probably longer. Um, but above you, the dragon is still circling far above you. How far above do I get a good look at there? You may try. Give me a perception check with disadvantage. Yeah, I sort of shade my eyes. I try to get a good look at this thing. And I roll a natural one. Again. As you're looking up, the wind is so intense, I think, that it makes it difficult even to open your eyes for a moment. And you're looking up, and all you can see is just darkness. It's it's not really even a the shape of a dragon anymore. It is like just an emission of light that's swirling around. Um, and as you're looking up, it starts to become kind of just a maelstrom, just sort of a whirlpool. The clouds turning in. And, and spinning with this darkness. You can't make out a shape I, or any detail. I... How would I be able... I think I would just keep going towards the ball. I think there's something I need there. Or there's something I need to know. And I need to be closer. The corpse of the boar is absolutely huge um there's a bizarre sense of deja vu here as if you've done this before you're looking over this thing and it is there's no flesh on it anymore it is just bones um the eye sockets are the head is sort of tilted at such a strange angle that both of the eyes are kind of looking in your direction um, the back legs are kind of just have just collapsed in a kind of a heap of bones um, but the ribs and the rib cage remains pretty much just this absolutely enormous thing this is and the bore is is pretty enormous um, it would look like a, an apartment building you know on its side that's the kind of size that you're looking up at um, within the rib cage sitting on the ground is a little tiny little chip of bone just a little tiny little thing like a it would it would be the size of a dice um but you recognize that one thing it it, it is what is calling you towards it right uh roll me a wisdom save uh 17 a 17 there's a strange feeling like a the closer you get to this thing it's like your body is on fire. Um, and as you progress forward, you feel this just intense pain inside your head, like a like an incredibly powerful migraine. I keep going. Behind you, there are voices calling towards you. recognize them you do recognize them um these are the voices of your orc kinship i turn back and look yeah you, you turn back um there is 
uh, not just your immediate kinship. And so orcs in this tribe don't really have like family. When you're born, you're just put on a baby warg and that's it. You don't like really stay with your mom and your dad and your brothers and stuff. You just become part of the pack. Um, you can see them at the head of your entire pack, but there are so many more orcs behind them. There's just an endless sea of orcs, just they, and it spreads out as far as the eye can see across the plains. Um, you look back now at your entire bloodline, um, all of your kin, and all of the orcs that were ever part of the pack, um, and they're kind of looking at you. What do you do? What do you want? Why are you here? Why am I here? Why are you here? Why are you here? What do you want? What do you want? Hey. <laughs> I, want, I want to stop this. This has to stop. This has to stop. There is a voice from next to you that says you are the very last of your bloodline who are you there's a kind of blurry shadow standing next to you you get the sense that it's kind of casually viewing the orcs and they're all shouting out at you um alongside you i get the sense that we have met before but i can't figure out how something I have to get and I I take a moment and look at all the people the way of life gone now forever the very last and I turn my back on them and I'll go towards the boar again. Do you think that that chip of bone is going to help you? Going to stop you from joining them? Eh, hey, fracky boy. I stand up a bit straighter and I say, I don't believe we know if it will or it won't. I know doing nothing certainly won't help. And I'll continue forward. Everything in this world must be purged. Everything must die. Who are you? I am death. And I am here to reap. I told you to run. Death. You beyond this. Yes. Why? Why didn't you run? There is no other way. To what end? No other way to what? Precisely that. The end. 
In order for this world to be reborn, everything must die. Your tricks may help you once, perhaps twice. You can save someone, bring them back, only to die again. A piece of an angel will not save you. The angels themselves cannot stand against me. What hope do you have? He's hopeless. All things must die, right? All but one. <sighs> I don't think that's how it works. Are you the god of death? If I kill you, maybe. You won't be able to. I've tried. Maybe someone like you lacks the motivation. Look around you. This is nothing but my motivation. It's mine too. Very well. Until we meet again. I turn away from him and go to the ball. Yep. Am I able to find the bone chip? Yes. I pick it up in my hand and study it. Um. Yeah, as you look at it, you feel the sense of kind of cold air on your face that chill that you've been accustomed to during your journey and there's a kind of crunching sound and a of uh footsteps pacing about nearby it's been three days seer jildan and cirrus have crafted a sort of poor sled from some logs um and the pelt that you made from a yeti and have been dragging you away from the site of the fallen condor uh over some time seer managed to locate a doorway into the mountain there is dwarven script across an iron door um and with repeated attempts to gain access they've just proved fruitless so far however after sort of camping outside of this doorway Frank returns to consciousness, and as you kind of open your eyes for the first time, I mean, an intense... You, first of all, you need to pee so bad. Then the yeah. hunger, um, the headache, the sickness. You feel incredibly unwell. Um, Sia, from behind where you are, no doubt, arms crossed, uh, leaning against one of the walls, the door rattles. And a little metal slit on the doorway opens, and bloodshot eyes peer out and up at you and say, Oh, who goes there? We thought everyone was bleeding dead. Uh, well, uh, funny you should ask, not all of us are dead. Uh, the name is, uh, Seer, and, uh, I, me and my companions have been on a long journey in seek respite, if you should be 
be so gracious to offer it. All right. Well, I've got one very important question for you. Go on.